Welcome back to Commander's Tech, Weapons and Warfare in Context. In this episode, we explore the guns of my childhood, the 1980s and 1990s, specifically the infamous machine pistols of that era, the Tech 9, the Uzi, and the Mac 10. Let's go, it's clear. Oh, yeah. First time you ever plugged somebody? Of course not. The 1980s was a time of amazing action movies, known for their gratuitous violence and their machine pistols. Infamous guns like the Tech 9 and the Uzi, they've filled pop culture from video games like Operation Wolf to music like Guns N' Roses and Public Enemy. With this pop culture marketing, the guns sold well, but ever since then, serious shooters and gun collectors had asked the question, what was the point of all these guns? The heyday of the submachine gun was from World War II to the early Cold War, when full-power battle rifles began to be replaced by assault rifles, like the M16. With battle rifles, a high-capacity, pistol-caliber support weapon like the submachine gun was useful for urban and jungle warfare. Also, submachine guns, which often have folding or collapsible stocks, could be issued to vehicle crews and artillery crews as a self-defense weapon with, due to its compact nature. Assault rifles excelled in all areas where submachine guns had been dominant so that by the mid-1970s, submachine guns had fallen out of favor with most militaries of the world. This made it, for a, made it a bad time to be developing a new submachine gun, but this is the time period when Gordon Ingram devised, or introduced, a new uh, compact machine pistol, a next-generation machine pistol, uh, called the Model 10. Thus, the Ingram Model 10, produced by Military Armaments Corporation, commonly known as the MAC-10. The MAC-10 saw some, some limited success with government sales, particularly for special forces, and was followed up by a couple of new designs, a couple of additional designs, the M11 and 380, and then later the M11-9, which I'll get to in a moment. Despite the, 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 that Military Armaments Corporation did have some success marketing the MAC-10 to governments, they were in challenging financial positions, so they, looking to broaden their sale and recoup more of their investment in the gun, they redesigned the MAC-10 into a semi-automatic pistol and began marketing that to civilians. That wasn't enough to stave off bankruptcy. Military Armaments Corporation went bankrupt, and there were a sequence of successor companies, RPB, but most significantly, SWD. SWD went on to... Oh, RPB and SWD did business under the brand Cobra. And in the 80s, SWD introduced what was actually an unused Ingram design. They called it the M11-9 which is a 9mm version of the, Cobra, uh, of the Ingram Model 11, produced in 9mm. What is distinct about this class of weapons, variously referred to as assault pistols, pistol caliber carbines when they have stocks, or subguns? As pistols, they are large, heavy, and awkward, generally with provisioned amount of sling instead of carrying in a holster or concealed and they have threaded or lugged barrels for easily mounting and switching barrel attachments like suppressors, barrel extensions, and muzzle brakes. As carbines, such as the Uzi or Sterling, they have extended barrels of 16 inches in the United States. Regardless, they feed from large box magazines, 30 round is standard, and have only rudimentary sights, an attribute of their submachine gun heritage. Combined with their large, heavy bolts and unlocked blowback action, Obtaining accuracy with these types of weapons is challenging, 
although not impossible. Lasers and optics can improve accuracy significantly. Bullets tend to hit in a cone, creating a beaten zone. Although often derided as spray and pray, this isn't actually a deficiency with these weapons when used appropriately, as we shall see. You stand out in the sun, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. During the same period, George Kelgren, working at Interdynamic Sweden, designed an equivalent, although very different, submachine gun, the MP9, which was targeted towards the same niches as the Mac. The MP9 was meant to be a lighter, cheaper, more modernized version of the Carl Gustav's M45 submachine gun, known as the Swedish K. But the MP9 was even less successful than the Mac, in that Interdynamic was unable to secure any government contracts apart from a rumored failed deal with Rhodesia, the nation ceased to exist before the contract could be fully executed. So, Interdynamic, like Military Armaments Corporation, looked to the U.S. civilian market to recoup their losses. They established a U.S. subsidiary, Interdynamic USA, and they redesigned the MP9 as a, sem as a semi-automatic pistol designated the KG-9. Following a few design changes and a corporate buyout, the KG-9 ultimately became the Tech-9. For some additional perspective on these types of weapons, during the same period when Military Armaments Corporation was uh, redesigning the MAC-10 into in semi-automatic mode for civilian sale, and Interdynamic was struggling in vain to find buyers for the MP9, Sub-Saharan Africa was rocked with civil unrest and revolution. The nation of Rhodesia would soon collapse and become Zimbabwe, but before that happened, the white population was subject to international condemnation for their po policies of apartheid, even as they sought to protect them, their businesses and their very lives from revol the revolutionaries. Towards that end, Rhodesian industry turned towards producing civilian model self-defense weapons for the white farmers and their trusted farmhands. What they produced were termed retroactively land defense pistols, after the most famous example, the Commando LDP. The LDP actually stands for La Costa du Place Ponter, the engineering and manufacturing firm responsible for the weapon. The Commando LDP is essentially a semi-automatic carbine based on a Czech SA-23 or SA-26 submachine gun. After the falls of Rhodesia, production of the Commando LDP moved to South Africa, where there were later versions, the last version of which was known as the SANA 77. In addition, the, the Commando LDP apparently remained in use with Zimbabwean security forces, possibly converted to fully automatic. Now, there were a number of other designs of these land defense pistols. The only other one of particular note is the Phoenix BXP. The Phoenix BXP is a South African produced weapon that is essentially a South African clone of the MAC-10, uh, generally produced in 9mm, um, made in both a semi-automatic civilian form as well as a fully automatic submachine gun form. What's interesting about these, the, the existence of these types of weapons are very strong evidence that there is a market in certain situations for these types of civilian submachine guns. Uh, if we were to make a, a find a rule here, we, I, we could say that um, in areas where there is civ significant civil unrest or high crime, such that an otherwise law-abiding civilian may find themselves 
stumbling into combat situations that they wouldn't otherwise end up in, in those in such times and places, otherwise law-abiding people will look to these types of weapons as a viable form of self-defense. In fact, in some countries, even the police are forbidden from access to fully automatic weapons. And as a result, we have seen such things as the um, British developing the Sterling Mark VI, semi-automatic carbine version of the civilian for police use, or even the um, HK developing the MP5 SFA D3, semi-automatic version of the MP5. In 2017, I went on my honeymoon to Paris. This wasn't so long after the Bataclan nightclub shootings, and France was still on high alert. They called it Operation Sentinel. Everywhere we went where there were people, there were police and military patrols that were heavily armed. I relish this as a chance to see up close exotic European small arms like the FAMAS rifle, but one of the things that I noticed was that the police were always patrolling in three-man teams, two of whom would have conventional semi-automatic handguns, but one would have a Beretta M12 submachine gun. The way the police were armed illustrates how these kinds of assault pistols can be, impl can be used. Essentially, these are not individual weapons, but should be used in conjunction with conventional handguns deployed in small teams. The beaten zone, created through fast semi-automatic fire with these types of weapons, can be used to suppress attackers and provide fire support for the rest of the team, who can then engage and eliminate the threat. In summary, these are not individual weapons, but are light support weapons, and can be used that way when true fully automatic weapons are unavailable. The submachine gun heritage in assault pistols and pistol caliber carbines carries through even into the semi-automatic civilian versions. In fact, of the few niches where the Tech 9 and the Mac 10 perform best, it is in squad support and point defense roles. So, these should probably still be thought of as submachine guns, even if they are semi-auto. And in fact, with the, with the rhythm of the bolt and the unlocked breech blowback action, uh, something approximating burst fire can still be accomplished just through fast semi-automatic fire. So, what are these weapons actually used for? Well, apart from uh, a range toy or a curiosity, about the only civilian use I can see for this type of weapon is in private security in jurisdictions where fully automatic weapons, true fully automatic weapons, are completely illegal. In such a jurisdiction, uh, a civilian bodyguard detail for a VIP could benefit from having one member of the detail armed with something like a MAC-10 or an Uzi, even in semi-auto, to provide heavy support in the event of a kidnapping attempt or, um, or an ambush. Obviously, these types of weapons would be, and in fact are, popular with those who are involved in less than legal activities. But, if a law-abiding civilian is finding himself in situations where he needs the capabilities of this kind of weapon on a regular basis, then either civilization has fallen, or he really needs to reevaluate his life choices, because he's really not a law-abiding civilian. On a somewhat ironic note, 40 years after Interdynamic and George Kelgren introduced the MP9 and failed to find any government buyers, leading ultimately to creation first the KG9 and then the Tech9, um, going on to infamy and ultimately bankruptcy for Intertech and Interdynamic. Beretta has introduced a new submachine gun and pistol caliber carbine called the PMX, which is finding uh, buyers and acceptance across Europe and around the world amongst law enforcement and special forces. And ironically, the Beretta PMX is, for all intents and purposes, the Tech-9. Thank you.